This is called Whoa. saltwater fishing. Double header. Why do we stop here, Captain Bryce? What'd you see on the screen? Oh, it's solid red. <laughs> Good job, bro. <laughs> that's such you get for the last three days. Show that jig, bro. That's the thing. That's the. Uh, Which one's that one? That's the flat fall. Flat fall. Oh, and a jump. Oh. There you go, Scott. You're hooked up. Nope. <laughs> you just never know what it's going to be. The wintertime fishery in Key West it rivals anywhere in the world. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. We'll catch a sailfish today. We brought the big guns, right? Pat and Bryce <laughs> is going to put me on a sailfish that actually yeah. lives in Key West. I've been told they live here. He's trying not to grab the steering wheel. I'm not. I, hey, I don't need I'm to I'm telling drive. you something right now. This, as soon as I get out away from that $10 million yacht, <laughs> the steering wheel is yours. No, I'm not driving. We hired you. Uh, I got world famous Pier One driving. I'm good. He's gonna take me where they live. He's got all the secret spots. The pilot jumps on that thousand footer and he takes the wheel. <laughs> you are a local pilot. No pressure. Scotty, so we're we're here in Key West. I got a really good friend of mine, Bryce Barr. Uh, you know him uh, just through fishing in the fishing circuit. Uh, he's been competing in sailfish tournaments a lot lately. Asked him if he'd like to join us, and he jumped at the opportunity. He had a day off, and. Um, we had him come on down, and, and, and what a great day we had. All right, here we go. All right, right here. A little deeper. 20 feet. Getting to school on the side scan. Got him? Yeah. I got him. Nice, nice, nice. So Scott, you know, Bryce really wanted to try to get some herring. Uh, he, he felt that uh, with all the sailfish around this time of year, that it'd be good to have some, some herring in case we put the kites up or, you know, saw some fish out in the deep water. You know, you guys don't see a whole lot of herring up up a marathon, do you? Oh, no. We got to go way back into the Gulf to get them. They don't uh, live out front like they do here. It's something we had to type of flow that you guys have between the Northwest and Southwest Channel. i say there's about 20 baits in there, maybe. I think we're pretty good with 20, don't you? I mean, for a little bit anyway. A handful more. Try to get out there while it's still morning, early morning. You know, once we loaded up with herring, he had the, the you know, and I, I get it, the same way we think. We want a little bit of everything because there's nothing worse than coming across a fish feeding on a specific bait and you not having that bait to match the hatch. You know, you've got to, you're not going to take a sailfish that's spraying ballyhoo and throw him a herring, he's not going to eat it. You've got to throw him a ballyhoo. So his plan was to go ahead and get a hold of some ballyhoo because we had been seeing some sprays uh, the days before. And so we went ahead and anchored down on the reef where he's been catching ballyhoo and we went ahead and loaded the, the boat with ballyhoo, uh, which didn't take no time at all. We're pretty connected with especially which range markers had the herring. So we'd have to, you know, go hopping, hopping, hopping. We'd hit two spots and all the bait he wanted for the day. And then uh, he'd, he knew exactly where the ballyhoos were quick to respond. And it was, you know, bait fishing was seamless. It was quick and easy. And then it, uh, you give uh, Bryce the 50 mile an hour boat, you know he's gonna be happy. <laughs> you know, I asked him what he was thinking he'd want to do. He said he wanted to go ahead and ride down the reef and look for some sprays. Uh, you know, a spray obviously is when there's a bunch of ballyhoo up on top of the reef and the sailfish get in there and they push the ballyhoo and they kind of spray, the birds come down. So we rode around, we looked for some sprays, and, and definitely I think Bryce was super excited uh, to get out there with us because, you know, he spends a lot of time in a, in a big cabin boat with a diesel motor. Mm -hmm. So uh, to get out there on that yellowfin and, and be able to, to cut around at 50 mile an hour, um, you know, get up shallow if need be. Uh, we got a little tower on the boat, so he's used to that, but, but I think he really enjoyed, I, I saw big smiles on his face once we left that bait hole and he hit the throttles. You know, I let him drive uh, and he had a plan, so we went with it, you know. Absolutely, he was a kid in a candy store there. I saw him. Oh, here, 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 here. Not right under the boat, not too far, not too far, right there. Oh, 
to the motors, to the motors, to the motors, to the motors. Straight back, hard as you can. Right flat, right flat. You might see that. He's on you, he's on you. He's on you. Yeah, baby. Oh. <laughs> another one out. He ate it, he ate again. Okay. Get another bait. Oh yeah, he's still there. He's kind of fading towards the left corner now. He's sinking. Hungry, bro. Crazy thing was, is I was yelling at you get another bait, because he spun around and ate the bait that, that he spit out. So he was ready to eat again, but... Uh, Jumped him off, he's acting like he's hurt, and he'll say, it's over for that one. And then he comes right back around and eats the bait he threw out of his mouth yep. with the hook. There we go. He was sinking. He's happy as hell, he got something to eat. Is yours shaking his head like mine? Lots of head shake. Oh, what you mean, head shake? <laughs>
Look, look what I can do. I'll share. Look, look at you. Look, look what I can do. <laughs> Good job, bro. <laughs> that's touch you get for that's last nice. three days. Show that jig, bro. That's the thing. That's the. Uh, Which one's that one? That's the flat ball. Flat ball. Yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to do all the work for you. <laughs> I can't give you the credit. Nice red grouper. You know, it was good. You know, it was a good, good it bite. Was steady. Steady bite. We were marking really good fish. Um, you guys were, uh, I think you were fishing a live bait. I was doing the live stuff. Uh, Bryce and I were using the new uh, Monarch and Butterfly jig from Shimano. Um, that, that flat ball is a really cool jig. You don't have to put a lot of motion in it. It gets bit on the way down. So people really enjoy that if they do a lot of jigging because... I know Captain Steve really enjoys that. Well, that jigging will wear you out sometimes. So it's nice to have that jig. Oh, baby. Don't catch those Take every that. day. Take that. Mill Monarch Butterfly. How are you getting to the bottom with that thing? No problem, bro. There's no current, no drift. Yeah. Love the tail on these things, man. That's always cool to see. So whether you keep your boat in the water or you keep it in a boat barn, one of the things that is very important is to kind of drop in and check on your trailer every once in a while. A lot of people will take their trailer, drop it off at a storage lot, and not even check on it until it's time to need it. And when it's time to need it, be it a hurricane, listen, we've had a crazy hurricane year. We're in November and we're still dealing with hurricanes. So what you need to do is you need to get in there and check on things. I mean, you can have flat tires, you can have bad bearings, you can have uh, rusted bunks, bolts broken, um, lights not working, numerous things that can go wrong. You need to be prepared because when that storm's barreling down on you, you don't want to have to be fumbling around trying to get parts at the trailer shop. The other thing is you could just make the initial investment with Ameritrail and they've already thought this stuff out. And, and by that, uh, you know, the, the bunks are all welded solid. Okay, so there is no U-bolts and nuts and things to deal with with dissimilar metals, corrosion, all those things. Uh, the wiring is all done right with heat shrink, so you're not gonna have a wiring problem. They know about bearings going bad, so that's why they're giving you a 100,000 mile, six year warranty on the Vortex hubs. These guys know what goes bad. The other thing is the tongue jack, always a problem, heavy duty tongue jack. Whether you make that investment or whether or not, make sure you check in on your trailer because the last thing you wanna do when it's go time is have to start repairing your trailer to get out of town. Want to see more Into the Blue? Well, head on over to Waypoint TV. You can watch the last 12 seasons, get exclusive content, educational videos, and make you a better fisherman. You can either download the app or go to waypointtv.com. I love fishing in Key West. The fishery here is amazing. There's just so many different things to try for. We got a huge variety of different species to, to catch. Even like today, we did some bottom, we did some pelagics, you know, we pulled off a sailfish we had. It's just, you never know, you have to have lots of different things rigged for lots of different types of fishing, you know, and we have different baits, different presentations, but it's, it's all kind of a challenge. You know, a lot of places where you go fishing, you're only gonna catch one or two species. Here we could catch, I mean, I've done 20 species on a half day fishing. You just never know what it's gonna be. The wintertime fishery uh, in Key West it rivals anywhere in the world. Might lose the first jig. I knew something big ate the fish that I had on, but I wasn't exactly sure what it was going to be, you know, and we catch a variety of different things sometimes that eat the fish that we're bringing up, whether it be a big amberjack or possibly even another big grouper or the sharks, and, and sharks are just uh, part, of the, part of the things that we want to do. One time I had a fish on and I thought it was a shark. I told the guy to break it off and we didn't break it off and end up being a about a 50 pound black grouper, but. That was a long time ago, Steve. That's not the case right here. Okay, that might've hurt my jigging arm a little bit. <laughs> I thought, I think my jigger's broken also. Oh, I see him. Color, nice one. Oh yeah. Big one, spear one, big one. Okay, who's the guy who's gonna grab him and pull him over the side? <laughs> I got you, buddy. You still got a little ump left in you? I got you. That one's not going Oh, anywhere. okay. <laughs> you want to change arms? You know, we were fortunate to get those uh, 
few nice bottom fish. We got food, we got dinner, and uh, it, it was all in all coming out to be a pretty dang good day. Oh, it was steady. We were, we were, we were there at least an hour and a half, you know? We were hooked up the entire time, whether it was with something we were gonna put in a cooler or something we were letting go. Our poles were bent. All right, he's going. All right, I hope I'm not, not to catch you again for a long time. You wanna finish this one off? No, no, I mean, I got you. <laughs> you need me. I'm good. You can't call me Sally. I'm just trying to dry <laughs> off here, bro. Guy's not even talking, he's hooked up over there. Silent killer. What does red braid mean? Uh, well, it's no longer green. Okay. So that means I've gained a little bit. Ah. Oh, look at Mutton Mike over there. Oh, think, Mutton Mike. Don't let this guy go, boys. Oh. I'm not giving you any of my scamps, so if he's 16, <laughs> you might want to hold on to him. Sometimes those uh, muttons have a hard time making it back down. Captain Bryce will fill us in on the, on the latest size limit. He's 18. 18 inches. Is it 18? Goodness. Yeah, we pushed hard for an 18 inch limit. Well, that's the thing, is there's, what they say, they spawn at that age? Or? Yeah, they say a 16 inch fish rarely gets a chance to spawn, but an 18 inch fish likely spawns twice in his life before he's harvested, if he's harvested at that, at that size. So it's way better for the species. Now I know how Scott feels. When I watch the show, I see Scott pulling on all these big fish. Scott's a good, Scott's a good man, bro. Ah, uh, man. He can pull on some Scott, sharks. Scott gets, Scott gets the big. He's not scared to grab the big rod or tangle with an epic battle. Uh, I tell you, to catch a big giant lemon shark like that after a, I don't even know, 45 minute hour battle, I was uh, I was pretty exhausted, I can tell you that. I'm I'm usually the one that, uh, that watches my clients pull on big sea monsters like that and don't have to actually do it myself, but. There is a monster shark on the end of this. That's a, a lemon, lemon huh? dude. Giant lemon. A lemon shark. I mean, a stud, dude. This guy lost my jig. Dang it. <laughs> you get five minutes to retack. Dude, that was a nice lemon shark, bro. Yeah. Cobias. That thing is up right in the corner of the mouth. Dude, you're dying over there. Good job, guys. I am dying. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Scales, every degree of water. Yeti, built for the wild. West Marine, for your life on the water. And by Shimano. Costa Pro Series. Nikon. Golden Boat Lifts and by SpearOneKeyWest.com. Into the Blue is on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Give us a follow or subscribe and check out behind the scenes footage and wonderful photography posted daily. Pretty much after that epic battle of Amberjack and, and Shark, we all took us a little water Gatorade break and, uh, much needed, much needed. And Bryce happened to see a crate, milk crate floating. And he said, hey, watch out for some mahi, there's a milk crate there. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But I was in the process of dropping my, my butterfly jig down, mm -hmm. the monarch jig, and it stopped going down. And I'm like, that's really weird. Like, what? I like, realized that he's talking to me, and I'm like, what's going on? I look over the side, and there's a nice school of mahi there. Oh, look at here, kingfish. Hey, oh, big mahi, big mahi, big mahi. I, call, I called here, it. Here, here, right on the bow. They're not hanging out because he ate three of them. He ate my jig. Hurry up. I got the big one there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Go oh, ahead. denial. I think they ate my jig. My jig was falling. I couldn't understand what was up. There's a bigger one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go, here we go. Oh, this is magic. I told Bryce, I said. I just said. They're on the floater, they're here. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you. The floater's three feet away. There's one for everybody. Uh, you know, and just today, everybody was in the game. We were all working together, you know, over and under. And, and uh, the mahis are, are some of the most exciting fish that we catch. We call them the perfect game fish. I mean, it's a beautiful fish. They fight hard. They pull hard. They're uh, aggressive, voracious feeders. They're beautiful, and they're easy to clean, and they taste good. There's, like, nothing more you could ask for out of a fish. They're some of our favorite fish to catch here in the Keys. 
That's a good way to end it right there, gentlemen. From a shark to a triple Maui. Killer? No pick gaps allowed. No pick gaps allowed. Woo! Yeah. Maui! Beautiful. Welcome on up here, Cap. Bring a pair of pliers. Nice fish, Steve. Yeah, man. Good thing you were paying attention. <laughs> Circle hook right in the corner, Scott. This one's ready to go. Make it as clean as possible, bro. You think that little thing tickles them before you stick them? <laughs> a little hanger? <laughs> That's what I was wondering. Awesome, brother. Nice fish. Thank you. Nice little Maui for the box. Thank you, Cap. I'll move them up for the ride home after. Awesome. He's not ready. I right, got little, the trophy. That's the indicator that you're about to stick him. It means you're ready? Yeah. But he's got three lines out over there. He's got a little fight left in him. Take your time. Woo! Oh, what a jump. Oh! There you go, Scott. You're hooked up. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> We're in them now. Beautiful thing. Come on, baby. What are you boys doing over there? Nice one. Bring a bird coming in. All coming together. Must be the outgoing, major. Outgoing tide. Outgoing tide. I've nice. been telling you nice. boys. Nice fish. Nice addition to the already great box of fish we had. Um, you know, really cool to have, and you gotta be ready. Again, it's back to the same thing we preach all the time. We had surface rods ready to rock, and that's why we capitalized. Everybody knew where they were, and then, you know, three of us are all hooked up, and how do you finish a day better than a triple header of dolphin in the middle of winter? We are out of here, boys. That's more fish than we can eat. It was that, it was that uh, outgoing tide, bro. <laughs> you were preaching it's gonna be good, and it was. Dolly, dolly.